So now I've made six of these blanks one inch high and actually they turned out to be within three thousandths of an inch to the correct length which is not actually critical it's just fun trying to make sure we could do that. Um, and remember I'm making this hexagonal structure I need to make a second level of with these six nodes should be identical to these ones. We've got the vertical hold it through the center for the vertical already done now on these blanks but what we need to do is make two more holes at an angle of 120 degrees which was a little more tricky than I expected and we'll do that with a four jaw chuck so that's the next part of the project is to drill these two holes on the sides and then we have to put in holes for grub screws so now we have to withdraw or remove the three jaw self-centering chuck and to do that I put the um, gears in back gear here to lock it up and um, then put a bar of metal through the truck to unscrew it. Actually you're not supposed to do this but I usually do it's not, as long as I'm putting a lot of force on just put the key in the in the hole in the truck and just turn it and that's good to start and they recommend putting a piece of wood over the uh, lathe bed while you're doing this because if you drop this big heavy chuck it can ding up the bed but again this is a small lathe and uh, I usually manage to just put my hand right underneath as I'm t unscrewing it so that if it does fall it squashes my hand instead of the bed of the lathe so I've removed that three jaw self centering chuck and I'm going to replace it with this four jaw non self centering chuck you can see the jaws of this chuck are not all in the same position whereas in a three jaw chuck they are and we'll need to use these in order to hold the work to drill holes in the side now I've centered the piece of material the round bar in the four jaw chuck roughly by eye and I'm going to put it on the lathe and make sure it is actually centered this probably isn't uh, once that's done I'm not going to be actually machining this piece of material this way but it helps me set it up and you'll see soon why. So I've now mounted the four jaw chuck on the lathe but I want it to be freely movable and to do that I put the back gear in this position there and pull this lever back to the left and that puts it in neutral so that I can just spin it around by hand and just doing that I can see that the work is not actually centered properly it's actually off center. We'll actually turn the motor in that way and drive. Yes, so you can see how far out the center it is. So I'm just going to have to fiddle this with this by trial and error. The dial gauge is a handy measuring device, mainly used, at least I use it mainly like this, to find out whether things are centered. Um, and it's just measuring the distance to the object, just rubbing against the object itself. And as you turn it around, you see the dial swinging. So we're going to approach the high point here. And you'll see the needle change direction as we get, go over the top of the hill. There it is. So this is the high point right here. And that corresponds with uh, jaw number one is the high point. So I need to slacken off the opposite jaw, which is, four, uh, which is three, and um, tighten one. And I can repeat this process over and over again until I get it centered. This particular dial gauge, made in Japan, connects to the bed with a magnet inside this red box. And there's a knob on the front there. Uh, and if you turn the knob, it'll pull the magnet away from the surface of the lathe so it's easy to attach and detach. Pretty cool. Of course, an alternative way of centering the object is just doing it by eye with the work spinning. But that's facilitated or made easier by putting a center in the tail stock and bringing it up to the work for a reference point. Now that I've got it centered, I'm going to move the work. I'm not going to actually machine it in this position at all. And I've marked jaw number three, and I like to place that at the bottom. Um, now I'm going to loosen jaws one and four and rotate the work around. Now the object of this exercise is to get the jaw positions right in the vertical direction here, jaws one and three, the other ones are two and four, 
uh, so one and three are the vertical ones. I'm going to leave them essentially the same and rotate the work as you can see I've already done, turned it around 90 degrees so I can drill a hole in the side of it right in the centre. Um, actually it so happens that this piece of material is one inch in diameter and one inch long so the horizontal jaws two and four are also actually about right so just have to loosen them slightly and I do this by always adjusting jaw four and jaw one and leaving the other two the same so that I can take a piece out and put another piece in without messing up the centering system. So now I have the uh, center drill, this drill chuck, made in England by the way, has a Morse taper on it with a tongue which allows the um, drill unit to be popped straight out. So um, there's, no, there's no difficulty in getting the taper off, but you have to turn the handle up to the half inch mark before it'll be um, past that point. So I set that at half an inch, bring the drill up to the work, so it's just about to enter the hole, lock the brake on the tailstock, have the lock on the um, chuck actually loosened, turn it on, and start drilling, and now I can tell where I am in the hole. Um, by the time this goes, I think it runs my hand, so I should be right through the whole block. But actually, in this case, I'm only going through to the centre. So I only want to go up to half an inch deep, halfway across the one inch block. Um, that means I need to move from the half inch mark to the one and a half inch. 